Hey everybody, so this is just a bit of a small quick tips and tricks video for Embers Adrift. Things I've learned about the game, things that might help you out. So um, first of all, let's get started. Um, there is seasons in the game. There's day and night cycles. Right now we are in the fall season. You can find this out by hovering at the top right on your um, chat window here. And you can see just right here that it says it's uh, 6.55 p.m. on November 5th. Uh, 1664 and it's fall and there is actual seasons uh, not only that with the seasons um, the day and night cycles will actually change a bit not a lot from my understanding but uh, I'm sure if you were to time it and take you know sunset and sunrises and take pictures from the summer versus the winter you will actually see a slight difference which is really awesome um, and so yeah to deal with nighttime you you have a torch you use your T key I have a lantern here you can go ahead and buy a lantern at pretty much any uh, general uh, merchant, at least the ones that are in the newbie area here. They're probably everywhere in the world. So you can see there's the lantern there. It costs 10 silver. It is considered a little expensive if you're playing for the first like 10 minutes or a couple hours even. Um, usually you'll probably want to spend that on bank slots, but later on I think it's worth it because instead of a darker uh, orangey tinge you get like a more of a daylight color to it which is really nice so uh, I like that a lot okay so the next uh, tip and trick here is you probably notice I have only one chat window uh, right now the chat windows are hard-coded and you have two separate ones and one by default is usually your damage window so we'll just set it up what it looks like normally here uh, what you can do here is close this obviously but you can't actually close out the whole window but what you can do here is go here and set the uh, opacity to zero. It, it doesn't really matter, to be fair. Uh, and you can resize this to make it smaller as well. And then uh, basically you just tuck it in the bottom right. You take your other chat window, you put it over top. Because it's basically whatever window is clicked last, right? And I've logged in and out and everything like that in the game. And I've never had that pop up ever again. And then basically in here I can add a new window, obviously. Let's just close this for fun. Here's your chat uh, window here. You can go to settings. You can adjust whatever you want. You can go and change that to combat instead and then uh, close out your settings. Oh, and you can also obviously change your opacity because you'll see through if you don't do that, right? So we, we max it out and then uh, close the settings and boom, there you go. And then you can resize your chat window as little or as big as you want. Obviously, uh, well, I guess it won't matter. You can't get as smaller than the other chat window, so you won't have to worry about ever seeing that other chat window again if that's not something you want. One of the big issues I notice people have had is the death in this game. They're worried about when you die, you lose your items on your in your bag and you lose your coin at the time. It's not a big deal. You can find your way when you basically resurrect again. Uh, you spawn near one of these uh, embers. Basically, you have these little fires here, the ember fire. Um, and you spawn, yeah, you'll spawn around here, I guess. Uh, and then uh, you just come back to the fire, you sit, you'll have uh, five percentage, you know, damage here and there. Uh, you go ahead, fix that up by uh, sitting here, and then you can go off and get your bag. You'll have a little compass right on top of here showing you where your bag is. If for some reason you don't want to get your bag, you know, maybe you had very little coin, you had like one or two items on there, and you just literally went on an adventure and it's just not worth it to you, you can right-click your portrait and get rid of it. Now, one of the things that people do mention is, well, you know, they're out there and they, they, they do die and they don't want to lose everything and, oh, it's so annoying. Well, pretty much every little town has a stash box and a lot of people are not realizing this, but this here, for example, this is the very first, this is where you literally first start there's a stash box right here and you can use this to stash your items and your coins so if i go here i can deposit my coins and i got a wee bit on me nothing big uh and then you can pay to expand this over time uh and a lot of this junk you don't need uh like i've been holding on to this not a lot of them have value i could probably trade with another class that uses them uh but these are ingredients for spells that's that's a later on thing but uh yeah so uh your stash exists right there also um, this is your crafting station. So I just want to point these out. Like some people might not realize that. So your stash, your crafting station is right here. And then you have an anvil as well. This is to repair your gear. You can see my 
Uh, my gear rate now is at eighty eight percent. I believe that's efficiency. So like you actually do better if that's you know tip top shape. So let's just say uh, equipped. I believe if you do individual, it's a kind of derpy. Uh, it will only work from money that's in your inventory and not from your stash at this moment. That'll probably get fixed in the future, but I thought I'd let you know. And then um, you do have your merchant and your trainer nearby. Now, this is something that's interesting, but um, these in the past, and they do exist in other zones because somebody posted the picture earlier, that you can click this for merchant and you can click this for trainer stuff in possibly in other zones. I don't know if they're completely phasing them out or not, but I do know there are some places right now where these exist. So if you see these tables, but you don't see the NPCs, more than likely you might actually be able to interact with the tables. I think that was a newer addition in the last probably couple of months uh, to make people's lives a little easier. Okay, here's another one I only learned about today, which is kind of funny. Uh, so if you want to look at your training and professions and things like that, you just hit J basically. And J comes up and it tells you all your information, which I already always knew. When you get professions like prospecting and hunter and things like that, if you want to go gathering or uh, crafting, it doesn't matter. I would normally click here and I would try to figure out how like how much exp i have to the next level well the thing is i learned this pretty quick on my own this red bar is basically your 10 percent meter here and then these ones are you know this is 5 10 15 20 up to level 50 but what i didn't know is you can actually go down here and click the right click this and actually change it to one of your professions and then that way when you're out in the field you can legitimately watch it there live and watch it update your percentages without actually having to open that window back and forth over time. Even though you could do this and keep it locked, it's just uh, a nice little tip there just to uh, keep you a little bit more engaged with that. So I like that. You can even set it to none for whatever reason. If you just don't want to watch your progression, uh, you might like that. Another important one is instances. So to basically allow a lot of players to play the game and because there's only one starting zone right now, um, basically there's a lot of players that flood in. What you can do is type in slash instance and you can see what instance you are. And let's just say my friend types it and they're in level or in instance three. Then I can type in switch slash switch instance and I can say three. And then basically we'll go through the loading process and uh, load into instance three. And then there I can be with my friends. And here I go. So now if I type in instance now, I'm in instance three. Now keep in mind there are um, other zones that might do instance zero or one. They might not have a lot, a lot of players to have, you know, a second or third, you know, instance on them. So the instancing system won't exist everywhere. It'll only exist in those popular areas. Uh, at this time so later on when you're playing you'll learn pretty quick that uh, every class has uh, different ingredients that they use for some of their spells so for example I'm playing a stalker and one of the first ones that we get is this guy or striker sorry I don't know why I said stalker <laughs> striker uh, the DPS class and one of the first ones you'll get is this weak numbing agents and you'll get this from mobs and uh, I forget who actually drops it now because it's been a while but you can farm that particular mob and they'll always drop that. Well, not always. It might be a chance. But you can farm up and get more from them. So sometimes it's worth maybe farming them. And they will sh show you different information. So like, for example, this one here, uh, sh you know, is weak numbing agent. And it does three damage modification. And it requires a venture leveling too, which is pretty cool. So if you go ahead and you enable this, you can turn them on and off here at will which is kind of cool so you can see that fading strike my ability here actually uses this and so with the modifier i'll get a little extra damage on there and then i can turn it off and then if you look uh the mods on there will disappear which is pretty cool and i have weak venom but you have also ven uh, mild venom so you can see this one is pretty much like over time so if you click this on over time is increased just by one or whatever i guess it's a modification but it's very little right but if you go ahead and use the, the more advanced one, this is like the level 8 and plus one, uh, you can see that this Venom now uh, does three modification damage and one over time, which is a lot better, obviously. 
Um, but uh, yeah, and those are from Spiders, by the way, just to let you know. I know I remember what these two were, so that was an easy one. Uh, but yeah, you can turn them on and off. So you know, if fighting is going fine and you want to save them for later on, you can do that. Okay, the next thing is your armor. Now, I'm kind of new to this game, so I'm still learning the ins and outs of this. But this one is probably the best thing you can ever learn about the game, and it's called armor uh, weights here. If you put too much armor on yourself, you will go over and get penalties, which are very bad. You do not want to penalize yourself with that. So you want to keep under your armor weight. So right now, as a level 10 uh, warden, um, I can have 30 armor weight and this will increase slowly as you level up to level 50 to the point where you can almost wear a full set of gear or you might be able to wear, you know, some of the, you know, for example, I probably wear a lot of leather and then maybe I can wear some lighter pieces as well. Uh, same goes for any of the other classes. Basically, the idea is you wear, you know, if you're, you're a you know, healer, you'd wear a lot lighter clothing. If you're a tank, you'd wear something heavier, but you're still going to have that early game. Uh, armor weight which is really important because the whole point of this is I can't go ahead and equip a billion pieces of gear and be Superman at the earliest you know point you you can't just have somebody craft you every single piece of item another cool part of this is you can hover over it and it'll tell you different armor weights uh, up to so obviously it'll say you know here 1 to 15 so basically, for me, it's probably going to be a lot lower. It might be worth, I don't know, four or five, you know, uh, armor weight for leather, uh, where something heavier with metal might be up to 15, obviously. Um, but uh, so this way, you know, like, oh, well, like, look at this. Earrings are really low. Now you know that you can wear earrings. Oh, a back item, you know, things like that. Um, the chest piece can go up to or the cuirass. Uh, I can't say the word right. Uh, I can go up to 15 to 30 armor weight. So then you'll realize what's lower and higher. And it kind of helps you, honestly. So it's a pretty cool uh, system they have here. But at least now you know about the armor weight. You also know that you can't equip every piece of item you got early on. And as you level up, you will add more and more pieces of gear to your arsenal. Okay, back in our inventory again. We're going to talk about... Uh, the uh, positions that you have. So as you can see, when we hover over our great sword here, there's a positional bonus of 30 hit when you go from the side. You see the left arrow. Uh, if we check out our uh, horned, honed, sorry, uh, cedar longbow, you get one from the side as well as uh, one from the back. So you get 20 penetration from the side or you'll get higher hit from the back, which is really cool. So let's switch up our thing with X key here. So if we go over to this guy, you can see that it's yellow here. And that's the, uh, I guess that's the, f I can't even tell where their front is. Okay, there, there you go. So here's their front, obviously right now. Um, I'm not going to get much. I wonder if it'll show when I do this. Yes, it still does. Okay, this will be a good example. Okay, so I'm not going to pull out the weapon, but you can see right now frontal position when we hover over here. And if I go to the side, it'll be blue. So this is usually your optimal one. And then if I go to the back, this is your yellow one, which is the uh, the other optional, I guess, version, the, the 20 penetration. But it's also depending on what you want, right? So um, basically, if you're in a group, the side positional ones or the back ones are the best, obviously. And then if you want one for frontal, those are great for soloing. Uh, especially uh, because, well, you want every little point when soling possible. In this game, soling is a lot harder, obviously. So, um, yeah, that's the positioning system. Hopefully it helps you. It just gives you an idea how it works. So side position, you know, you'll say front position, uh, which is red telling us that's a bad thing, especially with this weapon and rear position. And here, if I switch, it'll go red because I don't have any rear positioning uh, effects on this one. It's purely side. So the optimal is the side. And obviously, if I'm fighting this solo... You know, I'm not going to get any kind of bonus because you, you could try running around it. And I mean, you might get some hits around it, but it, it's it's very, very hard. Overall, it's not meant to be that way. Um, so there you go. And look at that. I got an Imbune uh, Pine Crossbow, uh, which that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> uh, that's a recipe. So I could either put that in my bank or sell it to somebody or use it for my trading uh, professions and things like that. Okay, this is a pretty quick one. There is no directional anything in this game. It's all based on landmarks. So if you don't want to see this, skip ahead because you're going to see a spoiler. I'm going to open my map for this zone. So 
right now we we just left this this was the starting area when we first started this video i walked a bit uh there's another ember fire here the original one is somewhere back there i guess um so we know that we're we're basically here and you know you can see a windmill right here so if we look over here you can see there's a windmill here now there is something that sometimes works on this map i i seen it up and down i don't know if it's perfect or maybe i just never look but if we run to this ember ring here it is considered a landmark on my map here. More than likely, if we open the map here, it should highlight where we are now, which it does. So see how it highlights it there? So there is a small little timbit on like how it works. There is no compass in the game or anything like that, not in this sense of how it works. But at least you can um, get an idea of a landmark. So if you're completely new, you ran somewhere, it says you just like, discovered a landmark, but you just you just really lost, basically. Well, if you open the map, you can see it. And then everything in this game is based on looking at landmarks. So we can see the, the windmill there. There's the windmill on the top of the hill. Boom, just like that. Um, so, and then there's a broken tower over here. Look at this tower over here, right? So here's your tower here. There's the windmill over there, which is really cool. So um, landmarks is an important way of getting around. Now, one big one is blue tar is always your north. So I don't know if it's 100% north or like say north is slightly there or there. I've never tested this or checked this out. But pretty much if you go up in the night sky and look, uh, and even in the day sky, blue tar should be always up there in the sky. And he is your north star in a sense, except the planet and i don't even know what the name of it is but i think we're calling it blue tar blue tar yeah don't ask um uh, but uh anyways uh that's probably the best tip of getting around uh when you're in a group though and if you're in the same right instance which we showed you um there is a marker that shows you uh where you're going to other players which is great when you're in range maybe it's i don't know if it's like 500 meters or something like that so if you're out of range uh it'll gray out and it won't show you their vitals but once you see their vitals and stuff there's a little arrow that'll tell you where to go which is awesome and of course the only other place that i've seen a compass that exists is if you die and your bag is on the ground there's a compass towards your bag obviously okay so monsters and creatures have chevrons um, so as you can see, this show has a green chevron. It's uh, green. Basically, everything's going to be green here because they're very weak to me. Uh, basically, that's, I think, is it two levels under me and further? Um, I don't know the exact levels, but the idea is the colors... Uh, green usually are very safe um, then blue I think is one level under and then you have white which is uh, supposed to be the like same level as you and then you have yellow which is I think one level higher than you and then you have red which is two or higher levels so just because you see red doesn't mean it's you know worth uh, killing now normally uh, the two chevron is basically usually meant for I think two players um, you could say two, even three, depending on how weak you guys are, but probably two players. Um, I can solo usually, at least in the early days, I could solo the blue or, um, yeah, blue or even possibly white two chevrons. So you can solo it depending on how good your skills are, your class and things like that. Uh, usually though, the one chevron is mostly meant for just you. And then there's a three chevron. Let's see if I can find one for you. Okay, I was unlucky to find a, a third chevron mob around here, which is kind of funny because usually I can see tons of them. Um, they're usually uh, grouped for, say, four to five, six even, uh, people. And then there's a four chevron, which I guess is a full group of six people that are quite well geared or ready for a, a really tough fight. You probably definitely want, you know, two healers. Uh, a tank and things like that but uh, yeah that basically is the chevron system uh, so you, you'll see most people fighting the ones even the twos sometimes solo uh, after that you're not going to see anyone soloing threes unless they're going back in old content and kicking some butt there okay so the next thing we have is we're in this t town of uh, new haven city here and at the top here there's two different uh, banks here um, one here and one over here, so in the crafting area and near the council area. And um, you can see it by the Consortium Banker. And so you have your regular storage here, but what I wanted to show you that's important is if you work your way out, you have another storage here, which is New Haven Bank. 
and this is an actual uh, shared uh, bank with your alts. Uh, so you, you purchase it, it's first at 10 and then 50. So it's a little more expensive, basically you get one row less in cost, right? Um, but um, yeah, so your first the first row you have to pay is 10 where your, your other bank, I think you get the first row for free. Uh, but anyways, same idea. You put your items in here. You go to another character uh, on the same account, obviously, an alt, and then you can access said items, which is really good for people who uh, might have other characters or, you know, maybe they have a, you know, gatherer on one and a crafter on another, things like that to, to make their lives a little easier. Okay, so the last thing here is we're back out, and uh, there's these crafting trainers when you start out. In the city itself, they have specific trainers, but I thought I'd show this one, so uh, make things easier here. So basically, you can go here and get your uh, gathering and um, your crafting professions. Now, one thing that you have to realize is... You can have three in total, but they have a certain level limit. So uh, the way it works is I grab prospecting. And if I wanted to grab hunting, which I obviously did, prospecting had to be level six before I could grab hunting. Now, if I want to grab, say, um, another one, let's say I just want to be crazy and get, um, I don't know, um, outfitter. Uh, what I would have to do is wait to level six to get the outfitter. So literally, or sorry, uh, it would be level 12. I'm, I'm, I'm literally ruining my own brain here. So basically the way it works is uh, you can have three crafter or gatherers or mix, just three in total of professions. But the first one you get at level zero, obviously you have none. The next one you have to be level six of the one before it. And then the next one, you have to be level 12 of the two before it. So this one has to be level 12. This has to be level 12. And then you can get your third one. So uh, a bit of a grind, obviously, to get your third one. So there's a crafting one. There's the uh, other one somewhere around here. I guess there was one at the start. But uh, yeah, there are, there are trainers all over. And of course, you can go in the main city. And there's uh, literally the crafting uh, area and stuff like that as well. So I think that pretty much uh, sums up some of my tips and tricks. There there's a lot of them out there. There's going to be a lot more things to know about this game, but I wanted a way to help you. Uh, I guess the other one is, you, you know, you can hold shift to move things around on your UI. Um, you can also go ahead and if you move something like, say, my, my, my thing here and I want this here in front of my screen, but it's like, you know, I want to put it back here, but they don't line up now and I don't know how they work. You can actually right click them and reset their positions so they can be wherever you want on the screen. Uh, which is this is just a nice one to have. So, um, but yeah, pretty much I just wanted to give some of my experience and my tips and tricks to you guys and let you know uh, how things are. And uh, hopefully that helps you. So thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, commenting, liking, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you wonderful people next time. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.